Hey, what's up? It's WizardFoo. I got another game development video for you. Been working on the Voxel engine some more and um, working towards getting point lights and other types of lights besides just directional lights. And uh, along the way, I've re-implemented Voxel Occlusion, which has really helped. Check, it out. Check out what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> we have a model, something like this. Oops. Where, uh, whoops. <laughs> I forgot how to use Magica for a second. So uh, this is just like a little pillar of stone. And I've carved out the interior to reduce the voxel, the amount of voxels greatly. But still, there's something like 3,300 voxels to be drawn here. And with a uh, hybrid software and um, uh, hardware renderer going on here, it's just awesome to have as few voxels to, to draw as possible. Few voxels to draw and few voxels to erase. So the concept is to take any voxel which is currently not visible and just throw it away. It doesn't need to be done. And this can be even done for uh, globally for all um, all instances of a model or it can be done individually for if a certain model is rotated um, at a different angle than all the other ones and maybe it has its own um, occlusion going on. So let's look at what um, what this looks like um, actually gosh you're not even gonna really be able to see what's going on at all but maybe I can um, well, you can see something if I if I rotate from um, so one angle to another if you watch up in the top left I've got all the debug stats going the frames per second the current tick the memory and then we've got the number amount of the amount of voxels painted and the amount of voxels erased you can see painted is flickering around 3,000, 6,000, maybe even 10,000 sometimes. But if I rotate, this is going to jump up to something like around in the 100,000 100, range, so six digits, right? See that? It jumped up to almost 200,000 voxels drawn. Same there. We're getting about 200,000 voxels it has to render when it rotates the camera because when you rotate the camera, everything has to go. You have to erase the entire buffer, change the camera angle, reproject all the voxels for all the models, then go repaint every single vox or model that's on the screen. So um, let's take a look at that again. But if we were to take all those pillars and not make them globally occludable, so we're just going to make them regular pillars, no global occlusion going on here, this is going to make it way the hell slower because instead of rendering 500 voxels per pillar it's rendering like 3300 voxels per pillar so you can see already uh it's flickering the the amount of voxels painted is flickering from like 5000 jumping up to into the it looks like at least five digits there 10,000 20,000 painted so we're going to rotate you're going to see this jump to like a million voxels there we go 1.2 million voxels it has to render Again, 1.2 million. See, so you get the frame rates jumping down to like one frame a second too. And that's just from one simple change, right? Let's turn that back on. We'll just prove this, right? We'll run it one more time. You can see that it's only going to draw like 100,000 voxels versus a million voxels, which is quite significant, I think. There you go. It's even actually keeping up with the frame rate a little bit even though I'm uh, doing this on a slow laptop and recording a movie right now. So, uh, so yeah, this is significant, right? Let's look at what the code is. So got this open. Yeah, here we go. Um, basically, this is all what the, the occlude does is it just sets up a little buffer, right? This is just a two-dimensional buffer that's going to store all of the depths for the voxels for um, this model, right? And it's going to go and loop over all the voxels which have a 3d position and a 2d position we're actually just using the 2d two-dimensional position we've already projected um, all the two-dimensional positions in this project uh, this project voxels functions so we've got that out of the way so the occlude all it has to do is use the depth.z really and access the depth buffer with the X and Y so you, you do need all three coordinates um, but then so we're accessing the depth buffer and uh, doing a math min basically whichever if this depth is currently lower than another one then it is going to be the um, the voxel that we want to draw so we go through we go through and we test all the uh, we set up the depth buffer and then we loop back through and go loop over all the data the voxels again and this time we're um, comparing the uh, the 
the depth buffer for this voxel to the lowest depth that we found, right? So we've kept on applying all the depths for a two-dimensional position. So basically all the voxels could be stacked on top of each other, right? You might have four voxels all with exactly the same X and Y positions, but they all have different Z positions. So let's pick the pick the, only the voxel that's going to be needed, that's going to be drawn, which is going to have the lowest Z, Z depth. So, um, uh, and this, I, I originally implemented this whole method using, um, by slowly erasing voxels. So if a voxel is occluded, I would erase it from the, the voxels and, uh, and then, you know, update the iterator and keep going. And that was incredibly slow. I actually found out that to be a really, the huge optimization was just to basically create a brand new, uh, vector not even not even reserve anything just basically create a new vector and then if a vector is not occluded if it is the best voxel or the the uh, closest voxel to the screen or the camera you can say then push it back and then once we're done we had used an assign fast pod to uh, um, to assign it really quickly and that's it that's all there is to it so my next goals are basically to take this method and make it able to apply to um, any model right now, this is a private method within the model.cpp, so it just runs for global occlusion, but I also want to get it to run for individual occlusion, which is currently not, so uh, that's the next step. But um, yeah, this is a huge optimization because it affects everything. Every single model can be can run through this occlusion, and now that the math is all sa sound, because um, when I first implemented this voxel occlusion months ago, the math wasn't quite as sound because I didn't have voxels uh, aligning up perfectly with the pixels and I'm still really shaky on all the projection math and things like that but now that I've that a lot of the other rest of the engine has been uh, refined this little bit this voxel occlusion just like the cherry on top of the cake or the pie or whatever you put cherries on top of it's really really nice so thanks for this watching this video hope you learned something hope this was a value to you wizard foo signing out